All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going over how I back up my AWS cloud instances, the virtual machines I have running in the AWS cloud, to my Synology NAS using Active Backup for Business. So this allows me to have a backup of both my website and my forum site and other things like that, all automatically backed up to my NAS every single night, where I could actually even spin up and deploy it directly on the NAS if I needed to, or more likely be able to essentially use those files and those configurations to restore an image should I need to. And this works with both Linux and Windows virtual machines. So whatever you're deploying, and it's incredibly easy to set up and use. It uses Active Backup for Business to do a full bare metal backup of the machine. And there's even an option to spin up as a new virtual machine directly on the NAS itself. And it tends to be set and pretty much forget, and you'll just get an email if it fails to back up. Okay, so first, this right here is my primary AWS instances. These are my Amazon LightSail instances right here. I use Amazon LightSail, honestly, because it's way cheaper and easier to use than EC2, but this will work with pretty much any other cloud providers as long as you've actually got a virtual machine over there. So if you're using something like DigitalOcean or any of those other competitors, this absolutely works. And as long as you've got the ability to SSH in and root privileges, you can back this up really easily. And so in this video, we're gonna go through and back up this video dash demo virtual machine from the cloud directly to my NAS. And really the only two things we need to do this is a NAS with a BTRFS file system and active backup for business, which pretty much all the plus models have and a public IP address on our router. So we can do port forwarding. If you'd prefer, you could also install Tailscale on all of these devices and use Tailscale instead. But because these are public servers, I have public static IP addresses on them. So what we're able to do is only whitelist that single IP address in the firewall. So only that remote IP address can back up and we don't expose all of active backup for business to the internet, just the one virtual machine's IP address. And so as you can see, we are running Ubuntu 2024. And now with the new Active Backup for Business, it pretty much supports most common versions of Linux that you see in deployment today. Previously, they were very sticky on which kernel you could use, and it was very limited. But in the past year, they've expanded it significantly. If you are using one of the distros that has one of the newest kernels of Linux, you can still have some trouble. But I've got the article pulled up right here about the supported backup types, specifically for Linux. And as you can see, we've got Ubuntu 16 to 2024. And so we do cover a lot of the most common deployment virtual machines, including our Red Hat distributions all the way up to Red Hat 9.4. And for Windows, there is the exact same setup. And you can do that as well if you have a Windows virtual machine running or also just a Windows local virtual machine. But before you go ahead and get started and set all this up, just make sure whatever distribution you're using is on this list in the correct version. And assuming it is, you should not have too much trouble. All right, so before we do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and go on the NAS and go ahead and log in. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go to the Package Center and just install Active Backup for Business. And just go ahead and activate it if you have not already. All right, and great. Now I've gone ahead and activated Active Backup for Business, and we can see what we're gonna be using is this physical server option, and you can either do Windows or Linux. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our AWS server is able to talk to our Synology. And we're gonna be using port 5510 TCP for this. So if you wanted to, you could also, as I said earlier, set up Tailscale and use the Tailscale IP address. But for this demo, we're going to be using just standard port forwarding restricted to the public IP address of my Linux virtual machine. And so first thing to go ahead and do is one, come into your Linux virtual machine, wherever it is hosted, and make sure that it has a public IP address attached to it. So right now, this is a public dynamic IP address. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it a public static IP address. And now you can see right here, this 3.215.81.54. This is not going to change. 
So do this exact same steps for whatever you're hosting. If you've got a site site VPN, use that. But whatever you're using, you just need to make sure that it can talk on port 5510 to the Synology. So the way it works is the host contacts the Synology on port 5510. And so you can do that however you'd like to. But since we've got a public IP address that is not changing, we can just write a simple firewall rule with port forwarding to only do port forwarding on this public IP address to Synology Active Backup for Business. And I'm just gonna do that on my system right here. It's gonna be just blurred out. Okay, so this right here is my firewall rule. What I've got set up is essentially WAN port 5510 TCP restricted to only the public IP address of that virtual machine to the local IP address of the NAS I'm using, which is an RS2423+. And so I'm now just gonna add that and go right back and now we can get, keep setting up. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we are ready to go ahead and get started. All right, so now we need to install Active Backup for Linux directly on our virtual machine. And the easiest way to do this is to go into our download center and there's a button that will allow us to select all downloads. So we're just gonna come in here put in whatever NAS we've got, go into desktop utilities, and we want to go into Synology Act App Backup for Business Agent. And instead of downloading, we're gonna to go to all downloads so we can get to Synology's archive. And now we can select out the exact version we want, which is the most recent. And now we have direct download links to every single one of these. And so we can go ahead and select exactly which one we'd like. The reason we're doing this is that way we can just write a wget to download it directly to our virtual machine rather than having to use something like FileZilla to download it. So this right here should be good. Debian instance, which Ubuntu is based off of. And so we should just be able to right click on this and copy the link. And now I've SSH into the VM and we're just going to do a wget. And assuming everything goes well, it should be downloaded right here. And we just gotta unzip it. Yeah. This distribution did not come with unzip installed and it is a zip file. So I just need to install unzip and then unzip that Synology Active Backup. And now if we do an LS, we will see this install.run. And now we can go ahead and follow these steps right here. Once we've extracted it, once we see this install.run, we just need to do a sudo dot slash install.run. And this will go ahead and do the full installation for us and create the service and pretty much all automated until it asks for username and password. Now, if you'd like to, you can also create a user account on the NAS specifically for this that has limited permissions. So you could actually create a new account that is just for VMs. And these are the ones that use to set up the active backup for business. And that's great, especially if you're doing a larger deployment and have other things on the NAS that you wanna be restricted off. But here, I'm gonna keep it really quick and easy for this tutorial and just use my regular account. All right, so that took forever. I was on a small AWS instant on LightSail that essentially the burst had not filled up at all. So it was going as slow as possible and it ended up taking 30 minutes. If I had had burst because, well, it had been on for more than five minutes, it probably should not have taken that long. I have done this before and it's never taken that long at all, but it may take a minute if you have not already had the machine on and you're using a very underpowered machine like I was just for this video. Now we're just gonna go ahead and hit sudo abb-cli-c to connect and enter our server address. Username and password. If you have not set up a Let's Encrypt certificate for this, you will get this. You can say yes, or you can go ahead and set up a fully signed SL certificate, or you can just use a 10-year certificate. But I'm just gonna say yes. Okay, so perfect. Had to do it, redo it once because I ended up pulling a earlier version of Active Backup for Business and I had to manually install it than what I had installed. But this right here is what we've got. 
by default, it's going to do the entire device backup, send it to the active backup for business folder, give you the dates and all of these different pieces here. And if you're good with that, say yes and hit enter. All right, and just like that, it has connected. We go back to our NAS here under physical servers and active backup for business. We should see it linked on up right here and a default task automatically created. We go ahead and just hit backup now to go ahead and manually trigger backup so it goes ahead and downloads it. We watch our details and our overall throughput. And it can run pretty quickly over the internet, uh, especially given how slow of a VM this is, where it is literally with the compression taking up a large part of the CPU. While we're in here, we can also go through and add some customization. We can choose when we'd like to back it up. We'll do daily, 3 a.m. sounds good. And a retention policy probably makes sense. Eh, 14 days and maybe the last 10 weeks. So you can go back if anything does happen. And that way you've got the ability to kind of just have a copy of this server every day for the last 14 days. And then you've got that kind of weekly version for the last 10 weeks in case there was a problem you just didn't realize and need to restore. So files deleted or anything like that. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and let this thing back up and then we can actually see how we would be able to use it. All right. And just like that, our first backup has completed and subsequent backups will be significantly faster as it will be a Delta backup. While it's doing it, we can also come into our restore portal right here where we can actually see all of our file systems. In this case, we care about disk zero volume three, which is actually our run volume. And we go into our home Ubuntu user. We can pretty much see all the stuff we had downloaded. So this is that active backup for business package I downloaded. I could either restore it directly to the server right here or download it and all of our other config files, we can just pull directly off of here. If you look at the bottom, we also have this versioning. So this is the one that just ran. As you saw, it took a very short amount of time because not much changed. And this is the first one. So you have versions through that. All right, so that was actually the restore file functionality, which is probably what you're doing the most of the time, especially the cloud instance. It's really because files are gone and you need them. There is another option for actually spinning up either to Hyper-V, VMware, or even onto a Synology as a VM. And especially when you've got a super customized distro like AWS Linux, we'll see how well it actually works just because they are configured to live in this cluster. But you should be able to modify your config files to make this work. For example, for me right now, I actually have no ability to log in because the way AWS works is it is not going to allow you to actually log in with a password. There are no passwords at all. So it just takes SSH keys. So I wouldn't really be able to restore this thing without first modifying the networking stack on the host itself. But for VMs that you can do, it is available right here. Instant restore to Synology Virtual Machine Manager. All right, and so right here is that demo, and we can go ahead and power it on. And we can see right here, it is booting. However, the way the AWS virtual machines work is you're not really going to have a full headed system right here that you can really do much of anything on, but you can see that it is able to boot our virtual machine directly onto the NAS. And if I had a login here, it would work. And I could probably go ahead and create a user with a password on it so it would work. But at least the fact that we're able to get to this page right here means that the entire boot does in fact work. And this is how you could actually instantaneously restore directly from that VM image. And so you could get it running directly off of the system. Once again, it'd be way easier if you were running a conventional Ubuntu distribution that actually has the ability to have username, password, and set up DHCP rather than the highly customized version that is deployed on AWS. All right, well, that is it. That is how you can use Active Backup for Business to backup your cloud instances directly to your Synology NAS automatically. 
you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.